Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Sandy Cody, member of the NCBFAA's Regulatory Agencies Committee. I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's presentation. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Questions can be submitted by typing them into the question box on the webinar toolbar. We will address questions at the end of the webinar. This webinar will be recorded, and both the presentation and the webinar will be made available to attendees after the conclusion of the webinar. In addition, the webinar will be posted at both NCB FAA's and USDA's website. We're excited to be partnering with the APHIS ACE team to present this series of important webinars in preparation for the August 2020 mandatory filing date of the APHIS core message set. This presentation is focused on animal product commodities. We hope you find this information valuable to you and your clients. So without further delay, I will turn the presentation over to the APHIS team. Thank you, Sandy. Um, this is Dr. Vivek Kamath with APHIS Veterinary Services. I'll be uh, speaking for the majority of this presentation. Um, as the slide describes, this presentation will cover submitting APHIS-required import data for animal product commodities. This presentation assumes that the viewers have reviewed the very first presentation we provided using the automated commercial environment to submit APHIS import data for APHIS-regulated commodities. Many of the details from the first presentation will not be repeated during this presentation. This presentation will also briefly um, touch on related animal products, live animals, and select agents, which might all be also regulated by APHIS Veterinary Services. Please also note that this presentation will not address specific commodity admissibility questions, but rather provide general information about import conditions and the data entry associated. So first, I'd like to begin with some exemptions. As of this date, APHIS Core PGA message set information is not required to be submitted for APHIS regulated, APHIS veterinary services regulated live animals, select agent import, and hand carried material. APHIS veterinary services live animals, which typically include your livestock and poultry and horses, are inspected at the port of arrival by VS inspectors and the data for such importations must be submitted in paper, in paper and in an APHIS system outside of ACE. To avoid the duplicate data entry, ACE data is not required for these shipments, and the HTS codes for the veterinary services regulated live animals are not currently flagged for APHIS core PGA data. Filers will see references to live animal data in the APHIS core PGA message set guidance. Please disregard this live animal information for the veterinary services regulated material. Please do note, though, that Animal, APHIS Animal Care, which regulates the importation of live dogs, that their information is still required. The, the select agent shipments are subject to extra security and confidentiality requirements, thus they're not being included in the APHIS core message set at this time. Please, please note that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, may require uh, APHIS a, or may require ACE data for select agent imports as they co-regulate select agent imports with APHIS. The slide lists the websites that can be used to um, determine which, which commodities may fall in, under the select agent or a, live, animal, uh, live animal categories. Lastly, I should uh, note that hand-carried material which is material that is transported on a person or in their personal baggage or vehicle is exempt from APHIS core PGA data. Such material is typically biological material for research purposes and re typically requires an APHIS veterinary services permit in addition to other PGA regulations. Most people who hand carry material do not use a broker and do not use ACE for ACE data submission. Unless the hand-carried material is being submitted in ACE as an entry, APHIS PGA data flags are not enforced, and thus no PGA data is required. With no electronic filing, APHIS data, APHIS required information would be submitted in paper at the port of arrival. 
Please note that CBP may have additional restrictions on the importation of hand-carried material, which are detailed on the website linked on this slide. From this point forward in the presentation, we will not address select agent importations nor veterinary services regulated live animals or germplasm imports. This slide details the um, details the agency program code, AVS, for the animal product imports, which are regulated for, by APHIS Veterinary Services. Animal product imports are uh, category code AP0300 in the APHIS core message set. This slide and the following slides include diagrams from the APHIS core message set implement implementation guide. These diagrams along with others from the guide may be useful for filers to understand the flow of import data required. Definitions of the codes may be found in the appendix PGA and technical rules enforcing the use of certain codes may be found in the guide. Additional guidance may also be found in the APHIS Core PGA message set supplemental trade guide. You will see in this slide and in later slides that the animal products and byproducts AP0300 covers a broad scope of material. This diagram shows the overall PG-10 commodity category and type data requirements for all AVS AP0300 regulated commodities. This diagram shows, again, the broad scope of commodities that may fall under the AP0300 animal products category type. This is a diagram from the message set implementation guide. And this diagram may, may be useful to filers to understand which PG-10 elements should be submitted based on the specific category code used to classify the commodity. The appendix PGA has the full descriptions of the category codes and which commodities may, have, may fall within those categories. Another topic of this presentation will be related animal products. Many re related animal products, AP0200, are regulated by APHIS Veterinary Services, agency program code AVS. Related animal products are commodities that may have come into contact with animal products or be contaminated with animal products. Later in this presentation, there is an example of a related animal product commodity. As before, this slide and the following slide include diagrams from the message set, uh, implementation guide specific to AP0200 commodities and may be useful for filers to understand the flow of the data required for this uh, commodity this commodity commodity category type. As before, this shows the overall PG10 ca commodity category and type data requirements for AP0200 regulated commodities. This shows examples of some commodities which are considered related animal products. Like before, this, this diagram may be useful for filers to understand which PG-10 data elements and information should be submitted based on the specific category code chosen. This slide shows some of the data elements that must be provided in the APHIS core message set and these elements drive the message set. There are, there is a full list of mandatory data elements and this list can be found in the APHIS core implementation guide. As you can see here, this list does not include scientific name. Scientific name, which is PG element, element PG05, is not needed for AP300 nor AP200 commodities. However, the PG-17 common name specific is required. When shipment information is entered into the message set, it must include coding which directs the information to the agency and program unit commissioned with regulatory authority over that commodity. So for animal product and related animal product commodities, the government agency program code is APHIS, APH. The government agency program code is AVS. And for almost all animal products and related animal products, they are inspected by CBP Agriculture on behalf of APHIS. And that is declared using government agency processing code A01. 
For the data elements that drive the message set, probably the, one of the most important ones is PG10. PG10 record line is a primary architecture used to help stakeholders correctly report commodities within the APHIS core message set. The record line is critical for the APHIS message set because it supports the ability to filter and efficiently align commodities into specific groups. The main data element, commodity category type, is the top level grouping, which allows commodities or products to be lumped or split into specific groups using the data elements associated with the commodity categories and commodity characteristics. For APHIS Veterinary Services, the two commodity category types, again, are AP0200 or AP0300. The category codes then fall, fall as a series in the 200 series or the 300 series. And the commodity characteristics depend on, um, may vary depending on the series and the com specific commodity category code. APHIS Veterinary Services will still continue to require and issue import permits. As currently required, all government-to-government -government certificates will need to be continued to be filled out and endorsed and provided to CBP Agriculture in original paper format. Examples of such certificates include meat certificates, casing certificates, veterinary certificates, health certificates, certificate of veterinary inspection, zoosanitary certificates, sanitary certificates. All of these certificates, permits, and others are considered LPCO and should be reported in the message set. Now we'll go over some forms that are specific to animal products. This is an example of an APHIS Veterinary Services VS Form 16-6A, which is issued by APHIS for the importation or transiting of certain animal products. The red outline areas on this document indicate where you can find the required method set information. Additional information may be found on other shipping documents. This diagram is available on the, on the APHIS Core Message Set Implementation Guide as well. Information such as the permit number is in the upper right-hand corner, and in the middle of the first page, there's the commodity description. This permit, the APHIS Form 16-6A, is available to ACE, to CBP Agriculture, through a direct link from our APHIS permitting system to ACE. This permit is LPCO type code or PG-14 LPCO type code A24. The LPCO type code and permit number must be submitted in the message set to ensure that the permit image is matched in ACE and can be viewed by CBP Agriculture. Any, CB, any symbol, dashes, or letters in the permit number must be included. Provided that the permit matches, filers do not need to submit the paper permit via DIS or in paper. Lack of a match does not necessarily reject the PGA data. Filers can continue with the data entry, even if no match is found. Please contact us if you are experiencing issues with the permit match feature for VS Form 16-6A permits. Next is an example of APHIS Veterinary Services permit, APHIS Form 2006, which is used for the importation or of vet veterinary biologics. Later in this presentation, there will be an example describing veterinary biologics and commodities that may be classified as such. As before, there, the diagram shows um, red outlined areas where you can find the required message set information. The APHIS Form 2006 um, for research and evaluation of veterinary biologics is pictured on the left side of the slide and the APHIS Form 2006 permit for sales and distribution of veterinary biologics are pictured on the right. Both, both versions of the permit share the exact same permit form, uh, form type, which is the APHIS Form 2006. However, the APHIS Form 2006 permit for research and evaluation do have a permit number that's listed on this image that must be entered in the message set. APHIS Form 2006 for sales and distribution do not have a permit number. Instead, information such as the establishment number or form number itself, APHIS 2006, can be submitted in the message set in lieu of the permit number. 
Again, both permits are considered in APHIS Form 2006 and share the LPCO type code A06. APHIS Form 2006 permits for veterinary biologics must be submitted via DIS using APHIS, APHIS document code APH03. These permits do not match by direct link to ACE, and thus submitting the permit number in the message set does not provide an accurate match, and must, the permits must be submitted via DIS. This is an example of a foreign government certificate. Such foreign government issued certificates are used to document the processing condition and or wholesomeness of animal products. Such certificates vary by country and come in varying formats. Foreign government certificates, again, can be referred to by various names such as veterinary health certificate, meat certificate, inspection certificate, sanitary certificate. While the certificate itself must continue to be submitted in original paper form, the certificate number should be provided in the APHIS Core PGA message set. This is important to ensure that the correct certificate is, is, is matched with the corresponding message set and VS permit when required in the system. In addition, the certificate may provide filers with additional information about the commodity, such as exporter, name and address, importer name, commodity description, country of export, etc. This slide is a fictitious example of a manufacturer's statement, which is used for the importation of certain animal products. Such statements, manufacturer statements, may colloquially be referred to as stats and include documents such as manufacturer statements, producer statements, or shipper statements. These documents encompass part of the O for other in the acronym LPCO. These stats may be needed uh, based on an APHIS Veterinary Services issued permit or other animal product import guidance. An example of this will be mentioned later. Stats can be submitted via DIS. They are not required to be submitted in paper. However, the presence of a stat should be noted in PG 1314 and use um, PG 14 LPCO type code A25. The DIS submission should use APHIS DIS document code APH01. Next, we will go over some examples of commodities needing APHIS Core PGA data for related animal products, AP2, AP200, and animal products, AP300. These examples are not meant to be a full readout of the message set, but rather an overview or guide to highlight certain key data elements. All right, so example one, feathers for stuffing. The correct HTS code should be provided, and the correct category type code is AP0300 animal products. Since these are feathers for stuffing, the category code should be 315, hides and related byproducts. As with previous examples, sorry, as with uh, as previously mentioned, the permit number, certificate number, country of export, country of origin should be provided if 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 presented with the shipment. Most most feathers for stuffing do have a uh, do typically require a FSVS import permit. The manufacturer's statement or letter of authorization, if, if uh, required by the permit or some other guidance, must be submitted by the DIS or can be submitted as a paper document. Either method of submission is sufficient for manufacturer's statement. This is an example of an AP200 related animal product commodity. Used farm equipment. Used farm equipment falls under the category type code AP200 and category code 207. Farm equipment includes equipment used in the production of livestock or, livestock or crops, water machinery, tractors, but not automobiles and trucks. APHIS Veterinary Services restricts such used farm equipment for foot and mouth disease. If the equipment is coming from a country affected with foot and mouth disease, a certificate, a government issued, foreign government issued certificate signed by an official representative of the National Animal Health Service of the region of, area, region of export is required. 
the certificate must carry an official seal and declare that the used farm equipment was steam clean and is free of all dirt or particulate matter. Many HTS codes may apply to this commodity. However, the category type and category code and LPCR requirement remain the same depending on the disease status of the country. In this example, um, there's a image of a fumigation certificate, or sorry, a steam cleaning certificate, indicating that this used farm equipment was steam cleaned correctly. And the PG-10 uh, commodity qualifier of condition, A20 condition, was declared as used, for, so for used farm equipment. And to show that the uh, steam cleaning certificate was available, PG-14 type code A05 treatment certificate was presented. Foreign, disease stat foreign region disease status regarding the foot and mouth disease status can be found on the APHIS website, which is linked at the uh, end of this presentation. This ex example covers veterinary biologics. By definition, all veterinary biologics are regulated by APHIS. And the regulations require that the importation of these products be accompanied by a valid APHIS 2006 permit. The, as mentioned before, the APHIS Form 2006 must be submitted via DIS. As mentioned before, veterinary biologics permit APHIS Form 2006 have two versions, one for sales and distribution and one for research and evaluation. The data submitted for each different intended use uh, it differs. So one of the more common, more common tariff codes used for veterinary biologics is listed on the slide and is for veterinary vaccine. However, as, as everyone can read on the slide at the bottom, there are commodity types which are considered veterinary biologics. And if uh, it's not a veterinary vaccine, other tariff codes may apply. One of the key differences between sales and distribution and research and evaluation veterinary biologics is that sales and distribution veterinary biologics have a APHIS assigned veterinary biologics product code, which is PG02 product code, uh, product code uh, AVB. And this product code must be submitted for sales and distribution veterinary biologics, but not for research and evaluation biologics. The category type code, of course, is AP0300 animal products. And for veterinary biologics, the only acceptable category code is 307 veterinary biologics. One of the other uh, key differences between sales and distribution and research and evaluation veterinary biologics is the destination or quarantine address. For sales and distribution veterinary biologics that are imported from a foreign country, they undergo a quarantine. So the quarantine location must be stated in the message set. However, for research and evaluation, the final destination must be declared in the message. This example covers commodities for human consumption. These could be edible meat products, as well as supplements and nutraceuticals, which are also consumed by humans. The category, the tariff code may be, there are many tariff codes that may apply. However, if they contain animal origin material, if the commodities contain animal origin material, the category type code would be AP0300 animal products. The category, category code will vary depending on the type of commodity being imported. As you can see, the slide lists many of the common um, category codes used for commodities for human consumption. Some commodities for human consumption require a permit. Others require a meat or sanitary certificate, a foreign government certificate, or both. Sometimes the, the permit or other guidance may require a manufacturer's statement as well, which would be submitted via DIS. The country of export origin processing should also be declared in the message set, as well as the commodity type. The commodity type 
and animal species can be described using PG-10 records. And, and a further guidance on this will be provided later on in the presentation. The, the, um, the other thing to note about these commodities um, is that USDA FSIS, which is Food Safety Inspection Service, another PGA within, uh, within ACE, may also regulate these products with different requirements. So example five covers pet food and animal feed ingredients. Many HTS codes may apply, however, many of them can be found in chapter 23 of the harmonized tariff schedule. It's important to note that inedible materials intended for animal consumption should be imported using the appropriate tariff code, and that inedible materials will likely require an APHIS Veterinary Services import permit, VF 16-6A. Human grade, edible products intended for animal consumption should be imported under the correct tariff code for human consumption uh, for uh, edible grade commodities. But these edible grade commodities are likely going to be inspected by USDA Food Safety Inspection, uh, Inspection Service and meet, have to meet all the requirements for edible commodities. Again, it's very important that the correct tariff code be utilized depending on the quality or the classification of the material. The Harmonized Tariff Schedule does specify in the chapter headings and chapter notes which codes are applicable to edible, fit for human consumption, and inedible, not fit for human consumption material. Questions about tariff code use should be directed to CBP, should be directed to CBP import specialists. For pet food ingredients, animal feed ingredients which contain animal origin material, regardless of which tariff code is used, Again, the category type code is AP300, and the category code is AP305, which is animal consumption products. Since many um, animal, pet food and animal feed ingredients do require a permit, the permit number, as well as the health certificate number or uh, manufacturer statement should be, should be declared in the message set as well as manufacturer's statement provided by DIS if required. The country of origin and or export must be provided as well. In addition, the uh, animal origin material and the species from which it was derived should be uh, declared in the method set as well. Okay. So example six is about inedible gelatin, probably one of the more common commodities we get questions about. Most gelatin, can come in without a permit, with mostly just a health certificate. Many, uh, many different HTS codes may apply. However, in our review, the, the, two, um, the two listed on the slide are specifically uh, call out gelatin in the tariff schedule, so those might be the ones that are most commonly used. Um, the category code for gelatin is 314. And Gelatin is regulated slightly differently and the certification may differ depending on the animal species from which it was derived, so that should be declared in the message set as well. If APHIS Veterinary Services issued the permit, issued a permit for the importation of the gelatin, it, the permit may be, a permit number should be submitted in the message set, as well as if the uh, permit requires a manufacturer statement or health certificate, those should be declared in the message set as well. In addition to the species, um, the country of origin should be declared as the certifications or import requirements may differ based on the country of origin as well as the species. This example is about fertilizer. Um, again, many tariff codes may apply and the correct category code for fertilizer containing animal uh, material would be 318. Many fertilizers that uh, contain uh, animal products such as blood or bone material, and these typically require a permit. So the permit number, health certificate number, as before, should be declared. Please note that fertilizer, which may contain plant or chemicals, may also be regulated by other federal agencies. This example covers cell cultures and their products. 
These types of commodities include monoclonal antibodies, cell culture supernatants, acidic fluid, cell extracts, hybridomas, cell culture, cell lines. More than likely, your importer or exporter will be describing these commodities to you, so that they should, if you see some of these types of um, words, this is the, uh, it's likely a cell culture or a, cell, uh, a product of a cell culture. Many tariff codes may apply uh, because these are typically technical use products. And thus, the category code 309A, Animal Byproducts for Technical Use, is the one that would apply to these commodities. The species of, from which the cell culture or the cell culture product was derived should be declared. Depending on the species the, and its intended use, a permit may or may, a, a, APHIS Veterinary Services permit may or may not be required. Um, later on in this presentation, we will describe uh, certain guidelines for importation that APHIS Veterinary Services publishes on their website. One is for cell cultures and their products, and that guideline specifically um, uh, talks about the species of origin. So again, that is important to declare in the method set, as well as the uh, any LPCOs that are uh, being uh, used for this shipment. So next, we'll, we'll talk about some general guidance and guidance about disclaim. Yeah. Okay, so the first guidance that we'll go over um, is when there is, when a shipment has no LPCOs, so no permit, certificates, or other, but the tariff code has been flagged by APHIS as AQ2. APHIS data is required. So there's no opportunity for a disclaim code here. So one thing for I want everyone to uh, understand um, is one of the challenges we have is that APHIS has to flag tariff codes based on the tariff code and its description and the explanatory notes and are uh, you know, having to flag it based on, just based on that information. We, we're unable to flag the tariff code based on the country or commodity specific restrictions because those are not captured as part of the tariff schedule. With, um, with AQ2, um, HJS flag, APHIS data must be filed. So a good example um, is a lot of meat, uh, edible lamb meat um, from New Zealand requires just proof of origin. So there is no APHIS required LPCO. Other PGAs may have LPCO requirements, but APHIS specifically does not have um, requirement for a certificate or permit. It's just proof of origin. So here's a list um, of the mandatory data elements for APHIS veterinary services commodities within the APHIS core message set. The exception is the PG 1314 line, which is what we're calling conditionally mandatory. Um, meaning if there's an LPCO, please report it. If not, don't. So in this situation, it's New Zealand lamb. And as you can see in the red text, I filled in an example of what could be submitted in the message set for this commodity. This would be adequate for, quote, proof of origin, showing that this lambing originated in New Zealand. Uh, sorry, I should also note in the previous example that um, I was also assuming that the tariff code used was flagged AQ2. I did not specify the tariff code used. Um, multiple may apply, and, you know, the flagging may vary. But in that example, I was assuming, again, that the tariff code used was flagged AQ2. In this next guidance, um, would, if there's no LPCO, but the APHIS uh, HTS is flagged AQ1, there's the opportunity for a disclaim. APHIS Veterinary Services has guidance on commodities that do not require an import permit. These, this guidance doesn't necessarily mean that no LPCO is required. 
the guidance may require a certificate or manufacturer statement in lieu of an import permit. There are, there are links on this slide that show the links for the two different types of guidances, guidance documents available. One is a guideline for importation, which was I previously referred to this in the cell culture example. And then there's another uh, link to a list of low risk or exempted animal products, some of which can be imported with, quote, proof of origin, and some of which require a certificate. Continuing with this guidance, if no LPCO is required, you can disclaim using code A or code B. Code A, not regulated, disclaim code B, data is not required per PGA guidance. Or you can file a match set. I should note here, um, which we did cover in the very first presentation, that if an LP, APHIS required LPCO is present for the shipment, even if the HDS code is flagged AQ1, PG data should be submitted. So this example, uh, in this in this example, I'm again assuming it's AQ1 and no L, no APHIS required LPCO is present. So in this, in, there's two examples listed here. For uh, example here, rabbit meat. Rabbit is um, not, uh, this requires quote, proof of species. So if there was an importation of rabbit meat and the tariff code was flagged AQ1 and um, APHIS does not require an LPCO. There is no permit or certificate required for rabbit meat. Um, you can disclaim using disclaim code B because that is actually one um, piece that is listed on one of the links that was in the previous slide, rabbit meat. And you can if you use disclaim code B, please be sure to include the correct cargo description showing that the material is rabbit meat. So that can be proof of species there. Uh, another example would be uh, fire extinguishers. Um, these are there's a specific tariff code that is flagged AQ2 or AQ1. I'm sorry, um, or also there's biodiesel, which is also flagged AQ1. Both of these materials can be disclaimed using disclaim code A because they are non-animal origin. If they have no animal origin material, they would not be regulated by APHIS Veterinary Services. I should note that. Even if you disclaim for AFS Veterinary Services, you do have the option to submit DIS documents to support your disclaim. For example, you can upload an ingredients list to support the fact that you disclaim the rabbit meat shipment for AFS Core. It may be beneficial um, in, in, the, in these cases where the AFS Core flag is AQ1 to provide the clearing or inspecting officer with more granular information through uh, a, through filing an APHIS core message set. It may be especially beneficial if commodities require LPCOs depending, uh, if similar commodities require LPCOs depending on the country of origin or different cat, uh, you know, processing or something like that. So there, uh, later on in this presentation, we will go through an example where a message set could be filed to better, uh, to provide more granular information to the officer so uh, instead of filing a disclaim. So again, following with the example of um, no LPCO, APHIS, uh, APHIS flag AQ1, um, an example of a disclaim that could be uh, invoked for, uh, for, that, say, for that situation could be for plain bovine rawhide pet shoes. Multiple tariff codes may apply, but let's, in this scenario, let's assume that the tariff code is flagged APHIS AQ1. Um, APHIS Veterinary Services has published a guideline. Um, guideline number 1119 on that link indicates that plain, um, not flavored, not ground, not colored rawhide does not require an import permit doesn't require a certificate or anything. It just requires proof of it is what it is. So that, uh, that can be claim, disclaimed using disclaim code B. This is just another screenshot of, that, of the guideline page at the top and then specifically guideline 1119. 
So for these guidelines, again, it's important to remember that th there are various guidelines, and depending on the guideline, an LPCO may be required. In the example of the rawhide pet shoes, these are um, inspected but do not require a permit or certificate. So these can be disclaimed using disclaim code B for the plain rawhide bovine pet shoes. So going with another example of should you disclaim or should you submit PGA data, retail ready cosmetics. For these cosmetics, multiple HGF codes may apply. And uh, this slide, the second bullet, is actually a quote from the uh, appendix PGA for the description of the category code for cosmetics, which is category code um, 313. So cosmetics, again, like this says, are unrestricted if they're in final packaging ready for retail sale, even if they contain animal origin material. So these, this means that no, there is no APHIS required LPCO. And again, these cosmetics would need proof showing it is what it is. And I should note that this exception for, you know, this, this, um, this lack of this no need for LPCO applies to the final cosmetic in its ready for sale packaging, not necessarily, not for animal origin ingredients that are being imported to further, for further manipulation into cosmetics. So in this retail ready cosmetic, you can disclaim using disclaim code B, or you can submit a message set for APHIS core. So like I did previously with the New Zealand lamb, this is an example of what one may submit for a cosmetic. If one wanted to submit the granular information through the APHIS core message set to provide the inspecting or clearing officer with more information um, so that they can have it. Now my example was, was with retail ready cosmetics, but the example could be extrapolated to anything else that also um, may not have uh, could be uh, could be uh, is flagged AQ1, but maybe is you know similar to another commodity that typically requires an LPCO. So w filers do have the option to submit APHIS core PGA data for AQ1 commodities, so that the, the inspector and clearing officer can have the extra information readily available, so that they may you know review your shipment. Uh, without having to ask you for more and more information. There's n less back and forth. So again, this shows an example of some of the data that would be submitted for uh, this retail ready cosmetic. Lastly, I'd like to go over some guidance regarding product level versus component level data reporting. The product is the commodity itself. And the component would be the ingredients of that product or item. APHIS's um, guidance here is that the best technique is to always identify and describe the product with a full message set. And if applicable, follow the full message set with a mini set reporting the regulated ingredients, the components. These mini sets about the component information would follow the PG32 record and if the product has multiple regulated ingredients, then, many, then multiple mini descriptions would be submitted. Each mini description would be just a, a small set of data elements, which would be PG02, showing that the component item type is being reported, a PG06, the source country information, PG010, category type, and PG10, uh, characteristics, quasi characteristics, and PG-17 specific common name. If reporting the regulated ingredient, then an A32 characteristic is not needed in the PG-10 records associated with the product. Only report the character commodity characteristics for the components. The reason that NAPIS um, is suggesting that everyone follow this best, best practice 
is that um, while the reporting of components is not required and not enforced through technical means, it is the best practice because animal product permits are typically issued for a duration of one year and may not be always shipment specific. For example, a lot of animal product permits list commodities and it says, you know, pet food ingredients containing blank, 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 and or blank. So there's an and or statement showing that any or all of those permitted materials may be in a shipment. The shipment specific data will be on the certificate or invoice or other shipment information and or ingredients list. And it's, and it's important to review that and declare the shipment specific information to the CBP agriculture, to the inspector, so that the permit information, when a permit is required, certificate and shipment information all match and can be reviewed in advance of the shipment. In addition, this may help in, in verifying that no unauthorized material is within the shipment. And this may help if you're filing in advance in, in trying to resolve any non-compliance before the shipment arrives. Of course, we understand that sometimes there may be many ingredients and there may be uh, a learning curve in understanding which ingredients are regulated. So, you know, we ask you to report to the best of your ability. I should also note that for most animal products, except the veterinary biologics, biologics for sales and distribution, the required PGA data is not specific to an SKU or to a product code. Filers can submit data for all the, quote, versions or the formulations of a product within a shipment at once. For example, if a shipment contains multiple versions of a pharmaceutical, they all contain the same animal origin materials, but each version contains it in a different proportion. They may be considered different products or different product codes or variations. However, as far as the method set is concerned, you can file a single method set with just those components described, even if all of them, all of them have those components, but in various, form, various proportions. You can just submit it for once. This is a screenshot from our implementation guide showing how components can be reported in the message set. In this example, the commodity is a bouillon product and contains chicken meat, chicken egg, and bovine milk. And as you can see, the mini message sets are in the three sets of rows in the bottom of this diagram. The same concept can be extrapolated for other multi-ingredient commodities such as pet food, supplements, and pharmaceuticals. As mentioned before, the reporting of component level data is not enforced. It is, however, best practice. If you choose not to report the ingredients as components, you can report the product level data, PG02, and repeat PG10 multiple times to describe the individual ingredients. Or there's a less preferred method, which is if there's just too many ingredients, you do have the option for reporting product level data, PG02, and complete PG10 once, indicating multiple animal origin ingredients in PG17. An example of that is provided in the slide with a screenshot. Again, that's less preferred. It would be better if filers were able to submit component, specific uh, component level information for their shipments in the message set. We, would, we, we do ask that filers give us feedback on the guidance we provided here regarding the components and product level reporting. Um, we would like to understand if the ingredient level reporting is burdensome and if there's a challenge with obtaining this information from importers. Um, you don't have to provide the feedback during this webinar. You can feel free to email us. So lastly, um, as I mentioned, um, we do have an email address, which is ace.its at usda.gov, which we're using to manage our APHIS core message set questions across all of APHIS. Please email us with your feedback, any questions, any issues. Please be sure to provide us with screenshots, error codes, and other relevant information. Um, I should also note that 
our APHIS ACE team is opening to open to reviewing entries and the PGA data that you submit, especially during this transition period. We do not have an official pilot program, but you're welcome to send us your entry numbers and we are happy to review and provide feedback. Um, also listed on this web on this slide are, are links to our APHIS ACE website where you can find our webinars and the recordings. Uh, you can find the list of exemptions, the entry types uh, where APHIS core flagging is enforced, as well as uh, this full list of CBP appendices. I'm running short on time, so I apologize. Um, Import-export information can be found on our website. And lastly, I know many of you likely have questions about uh, import admissibility questions, uh, about import admissibility for animal products. Um, there is a new feature coming from APHIS um, hopefully in the next month, which is, or next two months, which is called APHIS eFile. It would include a self-service assistant uh, where people can type in a animal origin ingredient or a material and uh, understand the import requirements, which would be, you know, permit, certificate, or other. So, um, sorry for the long presentation, and I will throw it back to Sandy for questions. Okay, thank you. A lot of information. Um, we'll start with the questions. We'll do our best to get through them all. Uh, first question, must APHIS core data be reported for meat and poultry, poultry products which are subject to FSIS purview? Yes. Uh, when multiple PGAs regulate a commodity, um, the data specific to each PGA must still be submitted to each PGA. This would also apply when, you know, FDA and APHIS both require data on a commodity and also in the example that's stated in the question, FSIS and APHIS. Items that are normally examined and released by AVS at the time of arrival in the, port, in the first port will still be handled that way and APHIS submission will not be required? Is that right? Can you repeat the question, please? So items that are normally examined and released by AVS, they didn't give it an example, at the time of arrival at the first port will still be handled that way and AFID submission will not be required? Right, so I believe this, is, this question is referring to the live animals which are inspected and released by veterinary services directly, uh, and that's correct. The, the uh, APHIS core PGA flags, a data flags for tariff codes for those live animals are not, um, those flags are not in, in ACE right now. So um, when filers, you know, file their customs entry for live animals, they will not see an APHIS core data flag for live animals. And APHIS core data uh, does not need to be submitted for those live animals. Yeah, you remove the flags, right? So even though the, the guidance says it's required, it's not at the moment. Okay unless it's a dog. How will the broker know if the permit number is matched? There is a response from ACE that's, um, uh, I can't remember the exact words, but there is a response from ACE indicating a match is found, match not found. And the, the message that will still be accepted with the match not found, and if uh, you have a question about that, they can reach out to you, right? Uh, about Correct. why it doesn't matter. Uh, correct. Um, a part of there are operational procedures in place to verify a permit number, even if a match is not found. Um, ideally, the, the, yeah, we, we would like feedback in case matches are not found uh, because there could be a technical issue as well. So, uh, in in most cases, they should match, and if they don't, we'd like feedback on. And that email would go to the ace.itds.usda.gov? Yes, please. Okay. It was mentioned that genus and species is not required for animal products. Is that all animal products or just certain ones? If only certain ones, which types of animal products must genus and species be provided for? So uh, I believe that's referring to the PG05 scientific name. So that is, uh, PG05 is not required for all animal products. Um, the species specific information is captured for the animal products in PG010 as the uh, composition. Um, 
So it's captured differently. So it's not scientific name, but it's captured as like poultry products, bovine products, things like that. The manufacturer producer's statement as required on the VS 16-6A is to also be loaded under the PG-14 record. As this document does not necessarily have a number, what would APHIS advise to be used if no number exists? Brett, are you on the phone? Are you able to give an answer to that one? Yeah, thanks, Vivek. Um, this is Brett Miller. I'm, uh, uh, wanna, I'm the technical lead for the APHIS message set. And in that case, um, uh, it, it, it allows you to just type in that this is a stat document or a manufacturer statement instead of the number. So you can just go ahead and do that. Um, may we begin transmitting APHIS USDA message in our ABI ACE transmission in advance of the effective date? Yes. 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 We encourage every. So the message set for APHIS score has been available since 2016. Um, we haven't had too much participation. That's why we're now we have published our timeline and we're holding these webinars. Um, please uh, file today. Um, you know, in advance of the August 3rd deadline, uh, and work out any of the issues that you may have, any of the feedback you wish to provide us regarding our message set. Uh, that way, we can resolve any issues prior to August 3rd. Um, and you can resolve any of your ABI software issues prior to August 3rd. So yes, please, uh, you can file today at any time. Um, and again, like I said, we're happy to review any message set. Yeah, and also if you try and it rejects and it's an urgent shipment, you can just not send it and ask questions as to why it didn't work, right? So, I mean, it's really good to get started. Yeah. All right. Example number one, the importer is shown as a required element, but the implementation guide states to submit CB, Customs Broker, as a mandatory party and to use IM, importer, if CB is not used. Can you please clarify in the mandatory importer reference in the LAP or is APHIS stating IM should be used versus CB? Thanks. Um, I, 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 I understand the question and there's a, it's, it's not necessarily, so for these feathers for stuffing, a lot of these commodities require permits or certificates. There is a U.S. entity listed. Um, we're assuming that's the importer. Um, you know, the LAP party, the license or permitted party is, you know, importer record or, you know, the final destination. So, um, it's true from a technical standpoint, I believe only customs broker or importer is required one or the other. Um, you know, we, we, we ask filers to be, uh, to declare all the parties that do exist. So if an importer does exist, please, you know, report that. Um, uh, if not, I believe the LAP party would be, uh, you know, in this case, there's a permit. So the LAP party would be, uh, reported instead if you just want to report customs broker. Does that, Sandy, does that um, help clarify? Yeah, I think you're saying transmit both as, as a best practice. Yes, uh, yes. From a technical point, yes, only one is required, customs broker or uh, importer, but that's because, uh, you know, it's not always, if it's a self-filer, um, okay. you know, they make the one and the same. I got gotcha. you. All right, can APHIS core data be disclaimed for used farm equipment from countries which are not impacted by foot and mouth disease? For example, does APHIS core data need to be transmitted for used farm equipment from Canada? Correct, that can be disclaimed. They just need to make sure they make a statement that they're clean or anything like that or? Yeah, so, so I should, an overall um, guidance here is um, customs, uh, CBP agriculture can still inspect any shipment for the contamination. Um, so even if it's not from an FMD free, or uh, sorry, if it's from an FMD free country, it still should be clean. Uh, it still should not be, uh, you know, there uh, should not have any plant pests or noxious weeds. Um, so I know this webinar is focused on animal products, but 
Uh, there is contamination of soil and other plant-related materials that APHIS has restriction. APHIS, uh, um, you know, is subject to APHIS restrictions. So in this in this example for Canada, yes, you can disclaim it. Uh, however, it may still be inspected to make sure it's clean. Um, and yeah, it would be uh, useful to have any documentation to show that it's clean, or it may still be inspected. Just making that clear. All right, we have a lot more questions, so I'm just going to do a few more. Um, I believe we can answer. You're going to go through these and, and respond um, afterwards, because I think we have too many to to complete on time. Um, so, how does a broker determine if an LPCO is required? Right. So, um, I mentioned our APHIS e-file. Our our online assistant will be online uh, in the next two months. And, um, you know, for those of you that haven't signed up for our APHIS newsletters or alerts, uh, please do. If not, I will send it through the NCBFA as well. Um, that th There will be this online tool for searching um, and understanding import requirements for certain commodities. Um, if not, importers or brokers can contact veterinary services using um, the import-export services um, or import export link that's linked on the very last slide of our uh, presentation. Um, you can contact APHIS Veterinary Services to understand there are those links that are also provided with the low risk or exempted products or the guidelines. Those are also available. Um, mostly your importers and exporters uh, would contact us, but you're welcome to contact us as well. So right now it is kind of a more manual process. We're hoping that the online assistant will make it much a little bit more um, less manual and um, easier for you all to understand when an LPCO is required. Okay, and just last one, and then we'll we'll get out the answers for the, the balance. Can we pre-file APHIS USDA info before transmitting an entry to ABI, similar to transmitting FDA prior notice information? Like a standalone APHIS core, and I believe that answer is no, it has to go with the cargo release, correct? Correct. Okay. So lots of lots of interest and lots of questions. So we will get back to everyone. So in the meantime, this is going to conclude today's webinar. Thank you for joining and thank you, ASIS team, for putting this together for us. So as a reminder. Oh, oh go ahead. Okay. Sorry, really quick. Um, yeah. So um, Sandy, uh, I think you said you were going to send us the question, and um, if. If anybody else has any specific questions or if one of the questions you submitted to Sandy, you'd like to send us um, any additional info, you're welcome to email us directly and we'll respond to you. So um, sorry for the interruption. Thanks, Sandy. Oh, that's fine. And that's to the ace.itds at usda.gov um, email. Correct. So we'll try and compile the answers as well to send them all out to the attendees. Um, so, all right, um, lots of questions about the presentation, yes, uh, an email will be forthcoming to all attendees with the presentation and the recording, and once again, it will be posted at both NCBFAA and USDA's website. This webinar is eligible for one CCS credit. You need to email ei at ncbfaa.org to claim your CCS credit. This information is also going to be included in the follow-up email, so you'll get the email address there. A reminder, if you're attending as a group, please send one email to the ei at ncbfaa.org with the list of all the attendees. You don't need to send one for each attendee. Next webinar is uh, next week on the 25th regarding miscellaneous and processed products. It's a, like a catch-all um, um, webinar of all the other commodities that USDA uh, regulates under the miscellaneous and processed products. Um, the email, the follow-up email will cont contain the link so that you can register for that if you're interested. Um, thank you again for your participation and enjoy the rest of your day.